So after having some difficulty finding specific stories that I wanted to tell, I figured I'd go back to my very first story with my very first retail job. Roll the intro. This video is sponsored by The Coldest Water. During the lockdown, it was difficult for me to get my proper daily water intake, but with the coldest 32 ounce sports bottle, it's really helped me to get my health back on track. Drinking more water is something that's always been a struggle for me, but honestly not anymore thanks to this bottle. I can fill it up with ice at the beginning of my work shift, and it's still full of ice when I clock out for the day. If I wanted to spice things up a bit, I could even keep my drink cold for up to 36 hours, which is way past the amount of time I'm usually working. Not to mention, it also keeps your drinks hot for up to 12 hours as well, so it's a win win situation for all you coffee drinkers out there. I even bring the bottle with me when I go to the gym, so it's nice to have after a good cardio workout. It's really convenient, and it really helps for gas mask wearing nerds like yours truly. Links are in the description if you want to check them out yourself, and if you want to get a similar bottle, this is the coldest 32 ounce sports bottle. So as a teenager, I was desperate for any kind of income to help me pay for things like Xbox 360 games, DS games, technology, really anything. However, back then in my area, it was very difficult for anyone my age to get a job because nobody wanted to hire a 16-year-old with no work experience. I remember applying for jobs as early as 14 years old at places like Sonic because I just wanted any form of money that I could get a hold of at that time. This honestly still holds true in some ways today because finding a job in my field of graphic design, editing, and broadcasting is difficult because of the overwhelming negative opinion that the old-timers in this field have of people my age. Have you ever been denied a job because you had a college degree? This happened to me twice back in 2020. Anyway, back in 2012, I had spent the majority of the summer filling out job applications, which I had done every summer since I was 14. Everywhere from Sonic to Subway, and I think I even applied to McDonald's at some point, but again, I was denied that job. So my mom tells me about a local store called Save-A-Lot that her friend was the manager of. I had met him before at my brother's graduation party, and he was a really cool guy. So we drive up there, I meet my mom's friend, I fill out an application, and surprise, surprise, I'm hired on the spot. I honestly remember how excited my mom was when I told her that I got my very first job and I was going to come back in on that next coming Tuesday. So overall, the job was pretty basic, and it took some time to get used to because, again, I had never worked before. This was the first, and as of this video, the last time I had a job where customers actually bagged their own groceries. Of course, they do that in places like Aldi, but... This was a smaller chain store in comparison, so it was still new to me. If you haven't worked in retail before, this is honestly a godsend because customers have no room to complain about how the stuff was bagged if they did it themselves. That doesn't stop some people because they'll still demand that you bag it for them, but for the most part, it was pretty chill. Being a 16 year old struggling with social anxiety at the time, I tended to drift away from the front end and I headed to the back of the store and work on removing empty boxes from the shelves because that was part of my duties. At the end of the night, we locked up, cleaned up, and that was that. However, being my first job, I didn't know about certain workplace taboos and my rights as an employee, so that was definitely taken advantage of by my coworkers and the assistant manager Clayton. I was working 8 hour shifts with not even so much as a bathroom break because at the time I didn't know that breaks were a thing. I mean I knew about like lunch breaks and stuff but I figured that was like for full time office jobs or something. I was pretty naive back then. I know that some scummy businesses either give you a very short break, <coughs> gas station, or just none at all. But in this case I learned after the fact that Save-A-Lot did in fact give breaks because when I would put away the boxes in the back. I would see my coworkers smoking cigarettes and lounging in office chairs in the back, and they were goofing around and just having a good time. Yet I was never told nor even hinted at the fact that I was allowed to take a break during my shift. My 35 plus year old coworkers would also make uncalled for jokes in my direction and make some pretty inappropriate comments towards a 16 year old. I recall everything from LGBT slurs to threats, you name it. Remember, this was my very first job and I was still technically in the training phase at the time, so mistakes are natural to happen during a transaction. Yet any time I asked for help, it was this massive inconvenience for the assistant manager who came up to the front end with an attitude and making condescending remarks about my mistake. I mean, I'm just sitting here recording this script and just thinking about that time and I'm just like, wow, I'm sure you guys felt super powerful bullying a f***ing 16 year old. Anyway, so for specific instances where the job was just overall terrible, 
I remember there was an instance where I got reprimanded by the assistant manager one of the next few days I came in because there was this list he pulled out of closing duties that I hadn't done apparently. The thing is though, he had never shown me this list beforehand nor gave any indication I was supposed to do janitorial duties at the front. I could be misremembering, but I'm pretty sure he let me leave that previous night knowing full well I had not done any of these things. I think the worst part is after all the work I put in, the other assistant manager also had some unprovoked beef with me for some reason and started giving me verbal warnings while smoking a cigarette in the store in full view of customers next to the register where the food goes. I recall there was an instance where an elderly customer who was having a hard time understanding what I was saying wanted to return some canned food he'd just bought. I went through the process, I gave him his money back, but the next day the mail assistant manager Clayton came over to me saying something along the lines of, your register was $50 short, now that is a write-up. I had to fight him for it, and at the end of the night he surprisingly caved and admitted he was wrong, but there were a few times before that he took the money right out of my paycheck. Do note that I never saw him speak to other employees this way, even when they screwed something up royally. Now, the manager of the store, my mom's friend who hired me, I will keep unnamed here, he had nothing to do with this, and I'm still pretty close with him and everyone associated with him. He was never there when I worked, and the few times he was in the store, he was doing office work away from everyone else, so I didn't really see him much. He did come in one time after hours to help with stocking, but I didn't see him really at all after that. I remember that specific night I had a terrible migraine and I asked Clayton if I could go home 30 minutes early, which is a reasonable enough request since we were already closing the store. He got super irate with me and told me to just drop what I was doing, clock out, and go home. Because I didn't want to risk it any further and being a socially anxious 16 year old, I just toughed it out and finished my shift. He was basically fake showing sympathy at the end of the shift, but I mean, he was just not a very good person, so he was just being condescending. Honestly, I was too scared to tell my mom's friend about all the horrific stuff they were doing to me because I was scared he either wouldn't believe me or Clayton would have been an earshot. So to quickly summarize all I've said so far, the job was horrible. My coworkers were also horrible people who felt powerful bullying a 16 year old and I hated every minute of it. But honestly, my goal back then was to purchase my own laptop so I could play games on PC for the first time. So I had to stick with it at least until I could afford a cheap one, which I eventually did, but I recall I needed a little help from my parents to fully purchase it. So at one point I just decided that enough was enough, and because of the stress I lied to the manager that I was helping my brother move into college that summer, so I was going to have to put my two weeks notice in. For the most part, the days went by as normal for the next week and a half, but on my second to last day I asked for Clayton's help in fixing a transaction I had messed up, because you weren't allowed as an employee to void or remove items from an order for some reason. So for example if you double scan, you had to get a manager with a key to fix it. I don't know what 1980s-esque system they were using, but I at least know that Walmart had touch screens back then and you could void items. So Clayton gave up this persona of being a jokester and fun-loving guy around customers and the other employees, not so much to me, but during that time being the naive 16-year-old that I was, I joked with him to be friendly. So later on, due to the fact that I received no breaks whatsoever during my long shifts when there were no customers, I would lean against one of the tables to rest my back because there, I wasn't able to sit down, I wasn't able to go to the bathroom, so what was I going to do? I recall that Clayton spotted me doing this while he was moving some stock from the back, and he yelled at me saying, you better find something to do or I'll find something for you and I can guarantee you're not going to like it. So because he was joking with me earlier, and because I was naive, I thought this was another joke, so I said in a joking manner in return, okay Clayton. So I thought that was the end of it. So a few hours later, he helped me throughout the day and everything was normal, but just out of nowhere, like maybe an hour or two before the end of my shift, he comes in front of me in front of all the customers, he hands me the store phone and tells me to call my ride home because he didn't need to hear my smart ass mouth anymore. And he essentially told me that I was fired. I was very confused and I asked him multiple times, showing as much respect as I could why he was doing this, but he refused to clarify until finally he caved and said, when I asked you to do something, you said, Okay, Clayton, I am a manager and you were to speak to me like a manager. So I called my mom, I left, and didn't come back until I picked up my paycheck. I honestly applaud my mom's protectiveness at the time because she called the store like eight times because she wanted to rip this guy a new one. A little while after the fact, I talked to my mom's friend, the store manager, who had also left the store looking for better employment, and I told him what happened and he honestly admitted to me that he was suspicious of something going on, but he just wasn't sure. 
He told me by the time he was aware of the mistreatment that was going on, he had already transferred management power to Clayton and was already in the process of leaving the store. He did go up to bat for me and reprimanded Clayton, and I'm really grateful for that, but as far as I know, nothing really came of it because he was the manager of the store for years after that. So, that's the story of how I got fired from my very first job. And for the younger people in our audience, remember, know your rights as an employee, and if the job is treating you horribly like this, find one that's better for you if you can. That's all I've got for today.